Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Superman Lower Season 3 and the main villain that has just been cast. Also, we have some big breaking news to do with DC Comics, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so first things first, I want to say... I'm going to be uploading a new video on my second channel, which you can see on the screen right here. I think this video is going to interest you guys, so please be sure to go ahead and go to my second channel. It's just my name, Ben Rolf. I'm going to be making more videos there from now on, so please be sure to go over there. But this new video is going to be awesome, and I will give you guys the link via the community tab when it's up. Also, I'll announce it in my next video because it should be up in the next few days. But yeah, for now, let's go ahead and get into today's main topic. So, first things first, we're going to be talking about DC and the cancellation of dun 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 DC fandom. This news is actually coming from comicbook.com, who actually were able to get a statement from Warner Bros. Discovery, it seems. And so, in their article, which will be linked in the description below, they get a quote from Warner Bros. Discovery, and they say, With the return of in-person events, Warner Bros. Discovery is excited to be able to engage our fans live at numerous comic cons around the world and will not be scheduling DC Fandom for 2022. So this actually comes as no surprise and this is me talking because Warner Bros. and everything that's going on at Warner Bros. and CW has been going through a lot of changes. Everything has changed and it's pretty clear with them basically cancelling a bunch of HBO Max projects and things that basically they didn't see as worthy as going to cinemas. They pretty much are all in for theatrical releases for films, but also for in-person things rather than online digitalized things. And this is because they're new owners coming in and they see things in a very different way. And I don't think they like digital content. I think they like in-person or theatrical content when it comes to releasing films. But in terms of in-person events, I guess it's very exciting for people that like Comic Cons like myself, so this means Warner Bros is actually going to be back at Comic Cons from this coming year and therefore will not be scheduling DC Fandom, which in the past two years has been a big thing in promoting their new content. So this probably means Warner Bros is going to be full swing back at San Diego Comic Con next summer and at New York Comic Con coming this winter. But about San Diego Comic Con, as I've said to you guys before, I am planning on coming to San Diego for Comic Con in July, so this coming July next year, for Comic Con, and it seems Warner Bros. is going to be back there, so remember, get your tickets if you live in America, or if you're from abroad, try and come to San Diego Comic Con, and I'll say hi to you guys when we are there, it's going to be awesome. I believe some other YouTubers will be there, probably Eric if he can get down, and maybe Pagey like we have previously both gone in the past. But for now, let's continue with this. So yeah, it comes as no surprise to me personally that they are cancelling DC Fandom. I don't believe last year was too successful, but the first year was pretty cool and people liked the idea, especially during the height of the lockdown and everything because no one could go outside and it seemed digital was the way to go, but now that everything is kind of coming back, Warner Bros. Discovery with their new takeover will be putting the focus back on in-person events such as, and this is from the comicbook.com article, they say San Diego Comic Con, C2E2 and Emerald City Comic Con bring in talent and attendees for the first time since the COVID pandemic cancel shows across the globe. So there you go, they even name drop San Diego Comic Con. Also Emerald City Comic Con is pretty popular in America. So I would recommend go to Comic Con, you will find people like yourself who like the Arrowverse shows, DC stuff, Marvel stuff, Star Wars stuff, anything like that. And it's an awesome time. And so they go on to say DC did not have a booth at San Diego Comic Con and comicbook.com has inquired to see if the company will have a presence at New York Comic Con in October with the company confirming that it will be at New York Comic Con though it didn't specify if that meant with a booth or not. Basically that means they are going back to these huge Comic Cons and they want to bring in their talent and the creatives behind the show to engage with attendees live. Obviously, this was a huge thing in the past. For instance, actors who worked on the Arrowverse shows, who were leads, who were series regulars, 
were always scheduled in their contracts to show up to San Diego Comic Con every single year and they would promote the new seasons or the new films, that's just how it went. But then in the last two years, things got shut down, Comic Con got cancelled, and basically they just put that on the back burner. But now, it seems with the new heads of Warner Bros, they really want to go back to in person. And again, this is very exciting for fans who are going to be attending these events. Obviously, this is not so exciting for fans who are unable to attend events because virtual conventions like DC Fandom definitely were more inclusive to everyone because you can attend from your home, from your couch, from your bed, it doesn't matter where you are. But that pretty much does it for this segment of the video. What do you guys think about the cancellation of DC Fandom? I think it's a big deal because we've been relying on DC Fandom for the promotion of new trailers, new footage and everything. So what is going to happen to The Flash Season 9 and Superman Low Season 3? Are they just going to start releasing content online? That's probably the way things are going to go. I doubt they're going to have much footage by the time of New York Comic Con, so I don't know if they're going to release footage for the new season of The Flash there. However, we'll probably just be seeing it online on the CW's channel. But yeah, so let's move on to the next topic. This topic is coming from the Direct. I'm just reading off their article. Again, this was confirmed just the other day, and so... Superman Lois Season 3 is going to be casting its main lead villain actor for the next season, and this was just announced. And so, obviously they mentioned Bruno Mannheim in Season 2's finale, that was where John Diggle was. It was that like brief scene where David Ramsey showed up with news of Bruno Mannheim basically doing very bad things, and obviously that is going to come to fruition in this new season. And so it seems they have actually cast Bruno Mannheim. And so at a Comic Con event at Dragon Con on Saturday, September 3rd, so just this Saturday, the Direct was in attendance at a Arrow panel and they were actually there when David Ramsey himself confirmed that Chad L. Coleman, an actor who you might have seen on the Orville, was actually cast as a lead villain in Superman Lois Season 3. And the specific role he's playing was unconfirmed and is still unconfirmed, but because David Ramsey at Comic Con actually confirmed that he is going to be in the show, he has been cast as a lead villain, it's more than likely that he'll be playing Bruno Mannheim, the leader of Intergang, who was name dropped obviously at the end of season 2. So this is definitely something very, very exciting because. Bruno is a big thing in the comics, but it also means that we're going to start getting more Superman Lois related news because as you guys know, they are preparing right now to start filming probably in the next week or so for season 3, so maybe we'll get some more teasers in the near future. But one funny thing I have to point out is that Coleman was actually in the Arrowverse before and he actually played Tobias Church back in Arrow season 5. I knew I remembered his face when I saw the announcement because we have seen him in the Arrowverse before and so this is another Superman Lois decision that basically retcons the past of the Arrowverse which is just even more funnier than the fact that this is an awesome announcement but I think this kind of overshadows it and I think a lot of people have actually looked past this but this version of Bruno Mannheim has actually got the same exact appearance of Tobias Church from Arrow Season 5. And so, yeah, it's just like a funny coincidence, but it kind of continues that trend of Superman Lois retconning the past. They don't care if he's played another character previously, and he's just going to be a completely different character in the Superverse on Superman Lois. And so, I don't personally think that Bruno Mannheim is going to be like the main overall villain this season. I think he's going to be one of the villains, but they tend to do at least two villains, so. I think someone else is going to be the main big bad, but for now he's definitely going to be in the show nearer to the start. I think they wanted to announce this a bit earlier just because I believe they're going to be out filming pretty soon and we're going to see some photos and people are going to be wondering why is Chad L. Coleman out there on the set of Superman Lois and I'm presuming they're going to presume he's going to be, you know, some lead villain on the show and so 
As of right now, it does look like he's playing Bruno Mannheim, obviously the leader of Inter Gang. This story, definitely going to be kind of interesting, although I'm not like the biggest fan of like gang type villains in DC Comics, but I think, like I said, someone else is going to be the main villain of the season, but we'll just have to wait and see. So for now, if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe, turn on notifications if you're new so you don't miss any future videos. Also remember you can join and become a member of the channel to be featured on future live streams. We just did a live stream with members the other day. So you can join by clicking the join button below next to the subscribe button and you can join in any tier it's just supporting the channel but then you get some cool features including talking to me on zoom members calls with all of the rest of the members and obviously as well in the live streams and we're going to be hopefully doing those about once a month with your fellow members we had a lot of new members join recently so let's continue expanding that so please be sure to join you can join for as little as one pound 99 a month and that is it. But for now, you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. Remember to subscribe to my second channel where I'll be uploading new videos very, very soon. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.